can you imagine how powerful it would be if you want to share uh, the state of other processors or the state of debugging between different cores? No, let's see how a script engine functions work and uh, there are different functions in the script engine of the HyperDB G. There are different the HyperDB consists of different functions and in each ver in each version newer functions are added to the HyperDB G. So it's pretty uh, clear that you should check the documentation because uh, at the time that I'm recording this uh, video, then we have the current the uh, functions, but uh, other new functions might be added in the future actually will be added in the future so here here's the uh, link that you should go and investigate you should uh, see that uh, how they implement it here if i want to just uh, uh, make a separation between each function or just convert them to different parts uh, i will create uh, these diagrams that shows that we have functions that are relating to the high halting the divider or halting functions. We have also some event functions that try to manage the events within the script engine and other interlock functions and memory functions. Now let's see a halting function here, uh, which is called pause. This is a really cool feature of the HyperDVG. Uh, it just a function, it's just a simple function that tries to halt everything, halt the kernel or the in the debugger mode, just halt everything. And it's, it's the, this is a command that's not supposed to be used with the uh, question mark command. It's not an evaluating command. For example, imagine that uh, if you want to just halt the system or get the control of the debugging whenever something happens in your system. For example, let's say a syscall. We all we, we will uh, create a hook for all the processes or a specific process then each system call will trigger an event. In the event, we will, we will check for uh, different parameters that are housing the events and we'll check whether those parameters are from our interest or not. For example, let's say that we, will, we want to check and um, we we'll use this uh, simple S script in a syscall commands and for a special process and whenever uh, the event is triggered, we'll uh, check whether the RAX or the system call number which is available in the RAX is equal to 0x55 or 55 and RDX is equal to 0x66. So if this condition is true then we will get the control and say yeah this is this is the parameters that I want to debug this is this is based on my interest. This way we can just ignore everything uh, and continue our no normal debugging scenario while if the condition for our debugging which is, uh, is uh, triggered or the thing that we want is triggered in the target debugging then we can pause and get the control of the debugger. Uh, there are also other events like event enable and event disable. Uh, these uh, functions simply get the uh, event ID as their parameters and uh, you can just see the different event IDs by using the events command and uh, this way uh, you can uh, enable an event or disable an event uh, logically in the HyperDB gene. And we will discuss we'll discuss about these events more truly uh, truly on the next sections and uh, see here's an example here's a simple example that how you can use this command uh, also you can pass uh, a pseudo register or you can pass the result of a function or a variable as the parameter to the event enable and yeah, event disable function there are also interlocked functions i'm not going to talk about the interlocked function as it's an operating system function you can pretty if you don't have any idea about interlock function you can search the google it's pretty simple but uh, HyperDBG supports different interlock functions for for example like interlock to exchange interlock to exchange add and other functions this uh, if it's just want to say, have a simple explanation these functions guarantee that only one core apply change or decrement or change a special variable for example this is uh, i don't know uh, have you ever seen the like button in twitter for example if uh, all of the users around the world just try to uh, 
put their uh, like button simultaneously then uh, you definitely end up in a result that this uh, user tries to increment uh, the value of uh, the count of likes and other uh, user just tries to add, add something to it so it, it just you cannot do everything uh, simultaneously and that's why you need to interlock functions if you use a simple interlock function then it's guaranteed that each like is computed and each like is added to the target value so this, that's why interlock functions are here in hyperdb for example if, if you want to make some counters out of the script engine then you can use the interlock increment function there are also other uh, functions for modifying the memory from within the script engine or checking whether an address is valid or not these are pretty useful functions for example where we want to use if we want to change uh, a value which is pointed by r11 register to this value then we can use eq function which gets 64 bit uh, value and we will and it will put it to the uh, value that are pointed by r11 registers so and if it was okay then the changes were applied you can check it with a simple if a statement and if the and if the address was not uh, available or address was wrong, then we will see that changes are not applied. Okay, before just uh, going to the summary, let me give you some examples of how you can use the script engine of HyperDB.